I must say, data principal, data fiduciary. <laughs> I I'm like Manisha at this point of time, which is path of least resistance. What is the trade off? I'm not stopping to think about too much. I'm like, is this easy? Is this convenient? Go for it, and then deal with it later. Also, all of us have all you know have all we keep getting informed consent, and there are like I don't know how many pages. What is the longest number of pages of uh, you know? Uh, instructions and information that's given to us i have blindly said i agree very often and i think most indian consumers are in that zone uh, gauri in the previous session brought up the fact that there is you know illiteracy is still a huge issue voice recorded um, uh, commands are what is uh, working on most social media and other parts to operate the internet so there are huge challenges as consumers um, you know we have no idea you know uh, and it's only the big tech guys who know exactly what's happening and perhaps even they don't right because till till last year we were doing oh no till the year before we were doing um, you know metaverse 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 and then suddenly artificial intelligence came into the picture so can you imagine these guys who are at the cutting edge of the tech industry are also uh, grappling with challenges right but coming back to our session which is from informed consent to meaningful consent is going to be a long difficult journey you heard why in the previous session and i am spelling out a few things uh, but how do we get there the consumer has to be front and center and how does that happen that's what we are going to bring out here and i'm going to start with you rakesh because you've been part of the team that has helped create this law uh, you know and this has been work in progress for several years till 23 right uh, what was the vision what was the what, what was your sense of the consumer landscape with respect to data protection and privacy in india yeah so privacy was declared as a fundamental right in 2017 actually anticipating this kind of a decision the government had started working and uh, justice b n shri krishna committee was constituted on 31st of july 2017 itself so as far as this particular law is concerned definitely one of the aim is whatever rights the users has got by virtue of this particular uh, fundamental right in any case has to be honored but for a growing economy that india is that making this balance of the user rights versus the legitimate requirement of the industry is what the law in a way is centered around and you will see therefore that there are let's say graded kind of uh, expectations depending upon the size of the industry and depending upon the ask depending upon the context in which that particular industry including the government because it's for the first time government has been brought in to be uh, in a way equally liable for whatever rights are there yeah so so both these aspects have been taken care of right and uh, we just saw the election commission wrap the government for sending out uh, viksit bharat messages to whatsapp numbers isn't it without consent so no and and the supreme court judgment that uh, yeah. rakesh so, referred so, to so precisely i mean that's what really happens i mean privacy is actually not into our blood it very is, interesting is very something which is being i mean everybody wants but nobody actually wants to give up whatever possible discounts they may get because of whatever purchases they are doing in any mall or or any website also so to that an extent i mean this is something which is yet to get into the blood and maybe out of our own zeal this, is, sure, this pr sure. probably must have happened mm -hmm. in the ministry when they reached out to Mm -hmm. almost everybody who was connected on my gov platform mm -hmm. on this particular letter so that means not really being able to distinguish between the government and the prime minister as a person as a political party let me bring uh, kartik in here uh, kartik where are indian consumers at i think rakesh makes a very critical point here when he says privacy and this notion of privacy is not something that's a, it, it's it's not a very indian concept culturally socially privacy is not up there in our uh, 
you know, priority list in terms of what we want as individuals. What do you make of that? I don't quite agree that privacy is not an inherent concept. I would actually look at it not from privacy point of view, but from a consent point of view. Let me give you an example. There was a recent video clip which went viral. It was from the Drew Barrymore show. She had invited Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, as an invitee. And she asked him, can you lift me and then do five squats? And he said, yeah, of course, because it's Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He can easily lift two people and do squats five or ten easily. But that video went particularly viral for one specific reason, not just because he was showcasing his strength. He asked her to stand on the sofa and then he told her, I'm going to touch you here. I'm going to touch you here and I'm going to lift you. Are you okay with that? He didn't accept consent because she asked him to do that. He double checked her consent with specific details. That's the kind of consent we need for privacy. And it's not alien at all. It's completely normal. We actually do it with people. The thing is, we take people for granted and not ask them questions. Brands and uh, big platforms take people for granted. This DPDP would Implied actually consent. Exactly. So this act would probably turn that on its head saying, don't take people for granted. Ask them, be doubtful that they don't want it. Instead of saying they want it, ask them so that they want it in an informed manner. That's probably the change that I would expect from this. I'll do one more question and then I'll come to you, Kunal, which is that um, you expect this to change, but to put the consumer lens in this fashion with privacy and data protection, is that something you feel you just heard, um, you know, the industry experts in the previous session? Do you think that they are ready yet in the Indian context? Uh, they may not be ready, but there would be first movers who would actually change the scape completely differently because there could be newer companies which would look at this as a competitive advantage. Mm. Just look at companies which actually put their uh, ingredients list up front. Mm. That's actually a change completely because they know that there is a market for informed audiences who want to know what the ingredients is. Instead of it being hidden in the back of the pack, they put it in the front, basically saying just two percent sugar. Mm. So that's informed consent. So I will look at it saying, oh, just two percent sugar, let me buy it. Mm. As against it being hidden. Mm. So you would probably expect smaller, nimbler companies, probably in the e-com space mm. or in the D2C space, to actually take the lead and showcase that's the larger company saying, here is yeah. how we do it. Mm. Now you adapt it to your own sense. Right. Kunal, uh, at Google, what is the kind of work that you'll have done given that you operate in Europe where we know this a lot of work has already gone and there were references to the law there? What can you tell us about privacy by design? Because that's the big new concept, isn't it? And so here's an interesting thing, maybe a little bit of a misperception. Modern data privacy laws are actually written, written so as parts of DPDP Act on privacy by design as the first principle, not consent as the first principle. Consent is a pillar. In that, right? And then there's a healthy debate between informed, managed, etc. In a country like India, when illiteracy is such a big thing for us, where 800 million internet users, 1.2 billion mobile devices, there is a role that technology and platform needs to play that solves for that ambiguity. And uh, <laughs> Ashish basically took my script and he spoke about it very eloquently, but that's the role of privacy sandbox which is at the Chrome level and at the Android mobile ecosystem level, can we the build... browser level and at the... the browser yeah. level. Yeah. Where, because compute power on the phone is so incredible, it's on the edge, mm -hmm. where data does not have to get passed through a nebulous um, um, server side or cloud that is either in India or outside of India, mm -hmm. that it could get encrypted on your phone itself, that it's no longer a conversation about identity. It's a conversation about what are you, what am I as a user willing to share? Mm -hmm. So with that comes a new set of controls, which is the privacy uh, sandbox user controls, mm -hmm. which will allow a user, it's already live on Chrome for 1% mm -hmm. of the audience where we've mm -hmm. deprecated mm -hmm. cookies, third party cookies. Mm -hmm. The user has the ability to go in, even after the consent is done, to say, okay, I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Interest group, I love sports, I love Formula One, but I don't want anyone to know about that. Or I can just go back and turn everything. The conversation about retroactive or retrospective, mm. Mm. it's about giving a simple way in which users, irrespective of their uh, literacy, the edge mm. to the illiterate, 
can actually have an even playing field. Mm. Then advertisers like a Unilever, like all of the D2C brands mm. as well, can build on top of that. Mm. Because we're taking care of that 90% at the browser level, at the Android level. So now you can build meaningful relationships that are consent-driven. Yeah, also because all this time, I mean, uh, you know, con uh, companies like Unilever and other big global com consumer co goods companies, they got into the act of data collection <laughs> rather late, right? The data has been sitting with you guys. I mean, for obvious reasons. But but therefore, that aspect is something that is going to be worked on, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And again, at the so we just from a regulatory management perspective, there is a firewall between the ads business at mm. Google and my team. So everything that we are building is is open source available to every single company, including Google's competitors. Mm, mm. What's exciting is Microsoft two weeks mm. ago just announced a similar type of initiative. Mm. We celebrate that mm. because now you have multiple different companies testing, learning, sharing knowledge in GitHub, mm. improving on these technologies, the APIs mm. together. And I believe that the future is going to be one with, which has a symbiotic relationship at a platform level. Mm with full user uh, control and privacy and transparency mm -hmm. that every individual company can build on top of. Right. It's also going to be device level, isn't it? I was just reading, uh, I, I think I mentioned it uh, when we were outside. Uh, I was just reading that in America, uh, General Motors, uh, because the cars are connected, everything is smart these days, right? So it, uh, drivers of G General GM cars were actually inadvertently giving their data to a data fiduciary, I'm guessing. And then from there, that was being passed on to insurance companies. And insurance companies were going through that data to study your driving patterns and coming back to consumers with very different insurance premiums. You know, and that, I think, Rakesh ji, that is the kind of illustration that Indian consumers need, isn't it? Ki what is possible? What can go wrong? What are the dangers of giving my data? Uh, and how can it be used? Yeah, that's completely true. In fact, even in the Indian context, uh, a story which got published where somebody who got hit um, while driving Ola scooter I'm, I'm telling the name because it is in public domain. And he, he tweeted with certain complaints and there was a sort of a retorted uh, response back on the Twitter itself. This is what your driving habits are. And all of a sudden, this became sort of, of course, it did go viral and, and privacy issues came up as to how come, where exactly, when exactly, all these consents were taken and is it really fair on part of the company to share such details in public? So I'm sure, I mean, maybe such kind of stories will happen, which is how privacy concept of personal data protection will get into, I'll, I'll say, into our blood. Otherwise, I mean, it's, it's a challenge that in a society where we are not, normally not cared, I mean, I'll still say normally not cared about privacy we tend to share almost everything we know so so maybe over a period of time with education awareness new generation coming up using and such examples things will hopefully I and mean, people will become aware of their rights people uh, companies will have to be more and more transparent in terms of what they are collecting and what they are and what for and for how long so these examples, the law, maybe maybe some scenarios of penalties by the Data Protection Board coupled, yeah. put together, will bring in some kind of this yeah. semblance as as we go along. Some equilibrium will emerge. Some you're equilibrium saying, should some, emerge, yeah. but, but it's going to take time, one, mm. and that's where, I mean, the earlier uh, my, I mean, my colleagues mentioned that definitely to begin with, the board must take a uh, very pragmatic view of what we are rather than the legal uh, nuances which have been written in the law of in terms of the penalty that have that can be possibly i mean that can possibly be levied and you expect that to be the, uh, the the outlook of the board i do believe though the board has the process of constitution of the board itself has not begun but uh, i'm sure i mean the way at least mighty works, T 
piece we had been working was very very collaborative mm. we still get a flake is a different issue <laughs> uh but then this ministry particularly uh, is actually not into regulation is more into development and therefore i uh, i do believe that the good senses should prevail and the data protection board and the ministry should work in a collaborative mode rather than in punitive mode which is technically possible Karthik, what are some of the things that you notice as uh, behavioral mindsets that will need to be addressed from the consumer lens? Because we are looking at the entire topic through the consumer lens here. Uh, there is a famous adage, the consumer is not a moron, she's your housewife. It's a very famous adage that we use in advertising. Everybody talks about the consumer as some nebulous, gooey person who wants discounts for Diwali and etc. But you need to take a more practical approach. The consumer is also you, your spouse, your children. They are also consumers. So the first thing that I would say is I actually have a personal policy for anything complex. It's called ELI 5, which means explain to me like I'm five. <laughs> explain it in the simplest possible manner without jargons without legal sorry without legal jargons so that you are able to understand it first and you can explain it to a child this is what it is for instance if i am buying an ola scooter like the example he gave i need to be able to see in simple english what are the data that you are collecting from me number 1 where are you going to use this data with or without my permission is there a place that i can offer my permission or not who are you going to sell it if you look at it from a human lens and not a consumer lens then it will make much sense basically the problem is we are looking at it not from an individual consumer point of view but millions of consumers point of view which is where everything gets hidden yeah so i think simplifying it would be great first but as i said there would be first mover brands which will take this as a competitive advantage and showcase saying look we are being 100% open in how we are using your data mm -hmm. and seeking your consent mm -hmm. that would probably inspire a lot more brands to say let's also simplify it makes sense it's actually very simple mm -hmm. for instance if you actually buy a cup of coffee in a store if that person who is selling that coffee to you consciously thinks of you saying this is hot handle it carefully that thought comes from another person saying i need to think like it's for me mm. and you actually put yourself in the shoes of a consumer and saying this is hot so please handle it carefully that's simple consent and consumer lens that's the lens that everybody needs to wear it gets hidden because we look at consumers as millions of people and not just one person mm. that we need to address kunal take that thought for forward how does this kind uh, how, what informs what you're doing at google privacy sandbox like what is give us an illustration or maybe a case study of how you all are implementing these changes yep. no absolutely and because we're in mumbai and i'm feeling a bit nostal nostalgic 1994 what was the most successful bollywood movie 1994 close close no <laughs> No, andaz apna apna. It makes me feel really old. <laughs> But you know what else got invented in 1994? The third-party cookie. <laughs> like I want, like I, I like to give this context sure. to explain like how fast innovation yeah. has gone over the last 30 years. But a core fabric of the internet, <laughs> that is the architecture of every single domain, is a third-party cookie that was in, in, invented in 1994. I think many of you all read that we have finally after delaying this twice <laughs> yes well, well 1% 1% so the reason for that 1% is to allow for companies the time to test and learn and understand what's breaking this is not an advertising use case of targeting people on the browser alone and here's where I'll give you some practical sure. examples a newspaper digital first newspaper who has built a really good stack in india really good stack was convinced that they didn't use the third party cookie at all we sat down with them we have tooling that's available for anyone in this room it's available for every, for everyone and we said let's run an audit of your site domains subdomains connection points subscription sign on which was 15% of their revenue was built on a third party technology that used the third party cookie So these are not edge cases. These are like real business impact cases. 
We have examples now for travel. We have examples for e-commerce. Imagine this. You're in your e-commerce portal mm. or branded e-commerce portal, but you don't log on. Yeah. And you add a couple of products. And then you're like, Chalo, I'm going to go to my shopping cart and then I'll sign on. It doesn't show up. Because when you added it before you signed on to give your consent, mm. Mm. that's a third-party cookie relationship. Mm. Every single company, now we're convinced, every single company that has a domain, which is basically every company in the world, yeah. is going to have to go through a big migration. Mm. So the reason why we did the 1% in January mm. is to help organizations identify what's breaking. And then we're giving them six to seven months to say, okay, fix it now. Mm. You have the time. Don't wait mm. till age two when we fully deprecate. Arpit who is part of my team, Arpit, please stand up, raise your hand. He is the face of Privacy Sandbox in India. He is, with one laptop and technical resources, going to each and every city and doing deep dives with companies right now. Mm. That's how we've unlocked all of these learnings because it's, we thought it was edge case mm. in the beginning. And that yeah. was our misperception. Mm. Arpit hosted one in Gurgaon last week. The last one he did in Mumbai was in December. He's going back to Bangalore and he's running one for the whole week mm. next week. We're making this evergreen. Mm. All of the tooling is available. It is a Chrome extension that you can run. Any company can run it today. You can give it to your tech teams and run it. We are here to help, but we need companies to also show up mm. and say, all right, I think something's going to break. Show me the way, and then let's figure out what the solutions are. Mm. Wow, Arpit. <laughs> have you how's the, how, what what are the increments looking like i mean i don't know how it works in google but you're a busy man clearly great question thank you <laughs> but arpit has been doing this for 3 4 years he's been educating the ecosystem mm. first starting with the open internet which is news publishers mm. because yeah. we knew they would get impacted yeah. the earlier so let's figure that out then move to media then move to fmcg in Just fact i sector. think news publishers want to be out of the gambit of the of this act no seriously there are huge implications for all news publishers and they would really want to be kept out of the to be exempted is the word from the um, clauses of this act. Uh, but that's not the conversation here, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, but uh, Rakishji, let's talk about children because that seems to be a big uh, focus area, both for the act as well as for consumer companies. Tell us what you see or what you all envisioned in the law. See, primarily when the law was being written, Maybe harm was the issue which was there in the mind. Because of that only certain aspects in the law have been written. Now it's also a fact that in order to understand the harm, you need to understand that the person which is on the platform is also the child. And to that an extent, there is a bit of conflict which is what has happened. We definitely did not want children to be profiled and and therefore maybe certain harmful activities being done but that's going to be a challenge in terms of the way i mean the law has been written child plus parent constitutes the data principle and how exactly and and which platforms and how exactly the exemption is going to be given for the verifiable safe platform so so government per se itself has i mean has created a problem for itself mm -hmm. and therefore this is one section which i believe uh, of course different solutions will come up when the, solu the when the challenges have been thrown maybe till such time the solutions come up this is going to be the one section which may probably get some bit more extra time because per se the act very clearly categorically says that different sections may get uh, operationalized at different times. So I'm sure I mean some solutions will emerge uh, DPI and, and, and uh, I mean tokenization is likely to be one but let's see I mean finally which way it emerges. Uh, Kunal do you have a do you want to comment on this? Anything that you all can share from the Google perspective? Everyone is really excited about AI right mm. now. Everyone, yeah. right? Yeah. But what are we going to build on if we don't fix what's already leaking in pipes that have existed for 40 years? Mm. Tokenization could be one of them, right? Mm. Uh, there's some other really interesting technologies like a trusted execution environment, mm. which sits in a third party place. These are like the privacy by design types of principles. 
This is not Google technology. This is an entire industry coming together with like financial services, fintech, e-commerce, other large tech companies, and a vibrant GitHub community to say, how can we improve these APIs? So even when we roll out the first version sometime this year, we don't stop. That's the beginning of the journey, not the end. And it's going to be a multi-year journey of learning where we, our responsibility at the platform level, privacy sandbox, is to reduce down every single signal that could be used for nefarious activity. Third party cookies, just one. Yeah. G g there could is, you illustrate yep, a little? Yep. Yeah. So there is IP protect protection, mm. which is tracking every user in this room based on IP. You didn't even give consent for it. Mm. But there are companies, and particularly bad actors, mm. that can basically create a 95 to 98% view of you with a degree of, con uh, of, of confidence. Now imagine if that goes outside of the borders of India. And I don't want to signal one co country, there are many, right? Including like bad actors in India itself. Mm. So there's IP protection. There is anti-fingerprinting, anti-covert tracking, all of these nefarious activities that exist today because signals are getting passed without a user even knowing. It sits beyond the span of consent. We need to reduce that down to the point where it's eliminated. What, That's a multi-year. What does that entail? Because there'll be so many stakeholders and there's, you know, technology is changing even as we speak. You know, and even though you're at the cutting edge of it, you would still be, is there a sense that you're playing catch up all the time? So we are working with over three, four, five thousand companies globally mm -hmm. where they have been testing these APIs for three, four years. This journey started in 2019 when Apple, to their credit, made yeah. the first decision, yeah. right? But Apple didn't provide the tooling necessary. They just shut it down. And that's how fingerprinting took off. Yeah. And I call a spade a spade. That mm -hmm. fingerprinting did not exist pre-2019. So there are companies that want to collect sig signals. They change. These are very sophisticated factories. These, this is not a cottage industry with a kid hacking, right? These are like hundreds and thousands of employees sitting in far reaches of the world. Our job is at the platform level, level to reduce that down so that nobody can steal it. And then there's a shared accountability or responsibility where every company, every institution, every organization needs to build on top of that to make sure that there's good governance. There's transparency. There is a clear handshake on what is the value derived of transferring that data. And I think tokenization is fascinating for that. This is a multi-year, multi-polar solution, not a 2024, we will figure it all out. Right. Um, Karthik, what's the kind of communication challenge really you see here? Because look at the terms that we are using. I mean, really, uh, I mean, every time I have to prepare for a session like this, I'm really actually, the reason I say yes is because I get to learn. This is not something I'm dealing with regularly, right? Uh, because I'm not a tech reporter and definitely not from this perspective. So the point is, what is the communication challenge here? Because there is one. I mean, we saw the cyber security, how that became an issue. And uh, since Kunal is here representing Google, Google did a big campaign in the past couple of years in association with the uh, Indian Banks Association, uh, right? And your and mighty exactly. So the point is that we saw that cybersecurity became a big issue, and then we saw all stakeholders collaborate to tell people about it. Banks, uh, you know, as well. I mean, I mentioned the IBA. So what is the communications challenge? Any tips on what should be kept in mind, and how soon, and how big should this be? I think this is a humongous communication challenge. Take the simplest example, a website that asks for your email ID or phone number, or it's an app that asks for your email ID or phone number. You as a consumer assume by default that you will be spammed. In spite of that, you give your email ID and phone number because you want something in return. You want a free account or you want a free page to read or whatever it is. You assume that spam to ho gai, I'll probably block it in true color. Or people actually create a, a email ID specifically for signing up to various properties, which is not their primary ID. Quite a few people do that if they are slightly more internet literate. So it is quite complex. But the answer is not complex, actually. You just need to put yourself in the shoes of a consumer and think from a slightly different perspective. Okay, I'm asking for the phone number. Let me assume that the consumer is going to assume that she will get spammed. How can I 
assuage that consumer that she will not get spammed so in three bullet points can i explain saying here is how we will use your phone number we will not spam you which means you will not get a single mail from our company that you didn't ask for at all if you want it please tick here consciously and we will not sell this data to anybody or be very honest saying we will sell this data to xyz company look up these companies credentials yourself then you can say whether you want it or not but you also need to mention if you give this phone number or your email id this is what you will get 1 2 3 4 5 then it's an informed consent yeah. but all i am explaining is just human simple level of communication the reason why we have never seen anything like this on any website or any app is that most of the companies want this data and there is no dptp act stopping them from not doing this at all now because there is an act as i said again there will be some companies which will take the lead in simplifying this to a very very easy level and then you will see a lot more companies saying hey that's actually a competitive advantage let me mirror the same thing so it's actually one of perspective you need to look at it from a slightly different perspective instead of saying i want this data at any cost you look at it saying i will ask the consumer make it really simple for her to say yes or no and then i will take informed consent and then i will do it it's it's one of simplification as i said eli5 really helps i think also uh, i mean you know at a very simple level uh, opt in should be the option rather than should be the default setting rather than opt out because i find that i have an opted in ever for most things absolutely in fact i actually waged a 8 month war with hdfc bank with whom i still have an account basically for about 22 years i have not cancelled them at all <laughs> they actually put me on one tier of an account and then automatically moved to another tier which had an annual charge they sent it as an opt out email which was in my spam box and i told them it should be opt in i need to consciously say yeah. yes to this charge yeah. they said no there is no rule like that i went to rbi rti everybody <laughs> said there is no explicit <laughs> rule you can't do that i actually gave up i'm sorry i can't do that at all so since you since you're making it a personal anecdote let me tell you i've just asked for my phone number to be changed on the electricity bill which is a public utility i was asked for my aadhar card copy <laughs> pan card copy and a form to be filled so i have no idea why they want my pan and aadhar but uh, it's that's it so and i'm talk- so he's talking about a private bank i'm talking about a public utility um rakesh what's yeah, what's see, your worst consumer come on come on come on yeah, come on so so no no you don't know no, you no, have no 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 i can tell you yeah. i can tell you i mean Please. i i went to purchase a vehicle and i was asked and at that time i was heading hmm, aadhar function in the ministry <laughs> i asked for an aadhar card nothing doing there is nothing nowhere written if you don't want to share your aadhar number aadhar card then will not be able to sell you the vehicle simple no no i i this so so everywhere. so so that's what it is but once again i do believe over a period of time this is how things will change Uh, very eloquently conveyed as to to maybe there will always be some uh, examples to be set in which probably will become the industry leaders and everybody will follow and that that's that's how it should the interesting thing is that when aadhar was first uh, imagined by nandan nilakani it was not suppo- there was supposed yeah, to be no so- card <laughs> <laughs> no card no paper so but so, i i i i will also like to maybe supplement another uh, mm-hmm. example there used to be like uh, for every document that you submit there has to be uh, a gazetted officer yeah. uh, signing it yeah. now once that has been done away with because i have seen it of my own i mean in my own colony as probably there were maybe one more <laughs> and then i used to almost every day getting some people asking for signatures no more for last 3 years no mm. more for last 3 years so mm. that means change has happened sure change does happen and should happen in this case also but the government has to be pragmatic enough that it takes time mm. and to that an extent the law does provide lots of i'll say warning channels before the penalties start kicking in and that's where i do believe the the good sense will prevail 
embodying, I mean, uh, getting things embedded into the system is more important. This is also possible, I mean, in the Indian culture, maybe you set one or two people right and the rest everybody will follow. So let's, uh, so I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at people here. I mean, in any case, in any case, <laughs> Government and big tech per se has been working very collaboratively, of course. Of course. Uh, it's, it's also true that, it's also true that in any case, I mean, if we have to fight, where else we will go? Where else we will go? Uh, okay, uh, Kunal, do you have a personal grievance <laughs> as a consumer? I love what you all said about humanizing context. I want to humanize the people who are building the next generation of privacy. Like we get lost in our own geekdom and our own topics. But I can assure you that the majority of the people have signed up to do this because they went through something personally. Waiting to hear yours. <laughs> My wife got a call from Interpol, quote unquote, wow. Interpol saying, you are, she'll kill me for this. It's recorded as well. Uh, you have been distributing cocaine. She's not, 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 she's not. But over a span of a call, I was on a flight going for a friend's wedding. So, so she couldn't call me. Over a span of a two hour call, they basically convinced her she's going to jail. And the only way out is if she shares all of her passport information, all of her photographs of PAN card, her banking information, because then it would get pulled out and straight out of the country in no time. Thank God, <laughs> the 2FA was with me. <laughs> but, but like my wife is incredibly educated. She, for her to be duped. And feel so, such anxiety. Exactly, right? so can you imagine how yeah. convincing and that's what I mean this these are not cottage industries these are like businesses these are like they are they are sitting with a proper organizational structure of how to hack and how to break and they do this for a living very well scarily enough and because India is growing so quickly cost of data is so low yeah. barrier to entry is non-existent yeah so I want to humanize why this is really important. And the decisions we make today will have profound impact as an industry together for the next five, 10 plus years. I think uh, maybe, maybe a tip from each one of the speakers on this journey from informed to meaningful consent. How does one make it? Uh, and you know, a tip for industry, and a tip for consumer. I'm leaving the government out of this at this point of time. How do you make this journey, given that I think we have just proved and we have enough anecdotal information and more that the consent we're providing so far is not terribly informed, right? Uh, it's like, it's actually not very informed consent that we're providing. So that's where we are. And we want to move from there to meaningful consent. Um, uh, Rakesh, you want to start or should I go that way? What, uh, Karthik? You want to jump into it? Yep. So consumer first and industry. How do you make this transition? I wouldn't probably put this on consumers at all. I wouldn't expect consumers to understand what privacy and consumer means because as he said, we are in India. It's a very crowded country. There is no personal space in India at all. So where did you get con consent and privacy in the first place? If you have privacy, that's actually a privilege in India actually. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's like that. I would actually put it on the companies and the government level. For instance, Google is a good example. I remember seeing um, terms and conditions update mail from either Android or Gmail. Mm. And they had taken the effort to crystallize the top three points of the changes that have been made. Actual terms and conditions that are changing is about three or four pages, which nobody reads. It's called fine print for a reason. Yeah. But they had made a conscious effort to say, here are the top line things you should understand. And I actually made a uh, conscious effort to read that. Uber did the same thing. Mm. They actually provided a gist of that. These days you have AI tools which can actually go through an entire PDF of 200 pages and give you a gist. Whether it's right or wrong is a different point. It depends on the scale of AI level. Sure. But there are both tools for consumers to look at those data and it's for the companies to actually consciously see 
that i want to make this consumer aware i don't want to take them for granted anymore at all i want to make them aware so let me put myself in the shoes of a consumer and see what are the top line things that i should know as a consumer and i wouldn't put this on the consumer at all Fair because enough. if a consumer gets 200 pages who can she ask saying can you give me a crystallized version she can't ask anybody sure. it should be the company that should do it okay fair very emphatic so mm-hmm. i i uh, i want to look at it from a call to action for everyone in this room and outside as well you should have started this journey 2 years ago 3 years ago the next best time to start is today <laughs> so please don't wait for longer till the changes are made already and you don't actually have the ability to impact or influence because it will happen very quickly now you do there's a window of opportunity please do that mm-hmm. it's extremely extremely important just take the first step do not get overwhelmed by <laughs> like all of the design and all of mm-hmm. the ja- the jagger just think about privacy by design as your first principle and build from there and this is a multi year journey that you all will build together i, I just want to call out there because sure. i heard there's some students in the in 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 the the audience as well this is the most exciting time to be in our industry it is like i want to leave you with a with hope not fear like to be able to see the greatest migration that the internet will have one privacy on the one hand and then utility in ai and all of this amazing innovation on the other is a once in a lifetime opportunity so i highly implore you finish graduate come work in this industry be part of this change your message was also f- to industry Yes. And to uh, n- not to the consumer. Absolutely. My yes. Yes, I I agree with Karthik as well. We're putting too much on the lens of the consumer. Consumer needs to hold us to a higher standard. We the industry have to deliver on that standard and beyond. No, f- lovely. Lovely to hear that. Rakesh. Yeah, so You're getting the last word, huh? Yeah. So anyway, I mean if it is the last word, then I'll just say that the law is already out. the law is already there rules will be a matter of time but as mr ashish also told that don't get misled by maybe the details which you probably are looking for will be there in the rules i do believe act is good enough for you to move most of the intent is already clear except for some clarification whether you are an sdf a significant debt of fiduciary or you will qualify to be a small one most of it is already clear timelines whether i mean intentionally or unintentionally you actually have got the timelines the law was passed on in the month of august the rules will not be out i'll say before august because even if they come for public consultation in the month of june it will be about a month which is given and about one and a half months minimum which government will also take before the rules actually get published get notified so that means in fact not even august maybe it will even yeah. cross that and if you add 6 months from their bare minimum because the dpdp board also has to come up they also need to go digital they also need to have their own sop in place so once again practically you have in a way one one complete year to implement and i'll say to implement means to start experimenting to start discovering yourself and maybe participate in such few such projects which may have a long lasting impact on you understand the implications much before it actually becomes a reality that's it that's a wonderful closing line uh, every, every, each one of the speakers addressed industry yes the onus is on industry who you know and companies and advertising advertisers who want our data uh, but given that it's our data given that there is a law that's been enacted no matter what the complications ambiguities and what have you i really think as the consumer there are enough and more avenues we have to speak up whether it's social media whether it's consumer complaints councils whether it's a forum like ascii so take advantage be aware of your rights and take a leaf out of the book of the consumers in europe in america who really have very very high standards and expectations from the advertisers they uh, support so yeah that's my my last take thank you very much what a wonderful conversation thank you